Is cinema dead? Not according to the movie I just watched. Frybread Face and Me is the story of Benny, a Navajo boy living in San Diego in 1990 who is sent to spend the summer with his maternal grandmother on the Navajo Reservation in Arizona. Benny is not happy to go. He had hoped to go to a Fleetwood Mac concert over the summer, and now those plans are shot. Besides, it's been years since he's visited the reservation or seen his grandmother and his aunts and uncles there. He barely knows them, but he has no choice. He goes. He's picked up at the bus station by Lucy, his mother's youngest sibling, his cool young aunt, who sells homemade jewelry and, rumor has it, is a lesbian. Arriving at the family home on the reservation, Benny is welcomed by his grandmother, who is patient, loving, and welcoming, and by his uncle Marvin, who is not. Soon after, he's joined by his cousin Dawn, whom he's never met. Everyone calls her by her nickname, Frybread Face, or simply Frybread because she apparently had oily skin at one point. Things are tense between Benny and Frybread at first, but that changes as the summer goes on, and Benny gets to know his cousin and the rest of this side of his family, and learns more about his Navajo culture and life on the res. When I was in college, I took some writing classes, and I found that one of the basic concepts of storytelling young writers had the hardest time accepting was the notion that we find the universal in the specific. It seems counterintuitive at first. You'd think if you want your story to touch the most people, you should try to write it in a way that doesn't tie it too closely to one particular experience, because not everyone in the audience will have had that particular experience. But that's not how it works. We don't connect to generalities. We connect to particulars, to specifics, because they feel real. And if it's real, if we can believe these characters are really going through something and feeling the same emotions we feel, we can relate to it. I am not Navajo. I have no significant recent Native American ancestry as far as I am aware. I've never been on a reservation. I've never even been to Arizona. My life has been nothing like Benny's. Or so it would seem. Because, as I watched Frybread Face and Me, I found myself relating to Benny more strongly than I have to any character in quite some time. We don't share the same heritage, we don't live in the same places, but I remember being 11 or 12 years old, close to adolescence, wanting to be a grown-up, resentful of still being treated like a child. I remember feeling out of place having to spend time with parts of the family I didn't know very well, surrounded by adults who didn't mistreat me, but also didn't seem to want me around, or know what to do with me, who didn't understand or want to understand me. I don't know what it's like to live Benny's life, to have his experience, but I do know how some of it feels. That's how Benny starts out on the reservation, but that's not where he ends up. He settles in, he finds connections, it takes a while, but he begins to feel at home. Frybread's initial suspicion of him fades, and they become inseparable companions. Rough, emotionally distant Uncle Marvin remains an adversary for most of the film, but there are glimmers of hope for a breakthrough, though whether or not it actually happens is something I leave for you to discover. And then there is Benny's grandmother, who may be my favorite character in the film. She is Benny's ally and protector, trying to make him feel welcome from the moment he arrives on the reservation. But she speaks no English, and Benny speaks no Navajo. Most of Grandma's Navajo dialogue is left untranslated by subtitles, placing us squarely within Benny's perspective. We don't understand her, unless we happen to speak Navajo, which, in my case, we don't, because Benny doesn't understand her. Or at least Benny doesn't understand what she's saying. The beautiful thing about Benny's relationship with his grandmother is how they are able to communicate, not through words, but through acts of love. Benny watches as she weaves a rug. She cooks for him. She washes his hair. He does pick up a few words as the film goes on, and Frybread speaks Navajo and translates some of what Grandma says, but Benny and his grandmother don't grow closer over the summer because of what they say. It's because of what they do. Fry Bread Face and Me is a coming-of-age story, and it contains many of the familiar tropes 
of such a story, but it's told in such an authentic way, and its characters are such fully realized individuals that it never feels formulaic. The cast, led by Keir Tallman as Benny and Charlie Hogan as Frybread, consists mostly of inexperienced actors. Of the principals, only Martin Sensmeyer as Uncle Marvin, Morningstar Angeline as Anne, Ben's mother, and Jeremiah Bitsui as Uncle Roger have more than a handful of credits to their name. Occasionally, that lack of experience is evident in the performances, but it doesn't harm the film. If anything, it helps. Stylistically, Frybread Face and Me recalls films like Steven Soderbergh's Bubble or Sean Baker's The Florida Project, which also feature mostly, or in Bubble's case, entirely unknown or non-professional actors. The performances can lack polish, but that only underlines the realism. Keir Tallman may not have the poise or the technical tools of a more experienced actor of his age, but he brings Benny to life on screen in a way that plays as completely genuine, and there's not a moment of the film when he doesn't feel emotionally right. The same goes for Charlie Hogan as Frybread. I can't imagine how making this film with more experienced actors giving more conventional performances would have improved it in the slightest. It's damn near perfect just as it is. The film is written and directed by Billy Luther, who is Navajo himself. I suspect, from the occasional appearance of what looks to be Luther's own whole movies, that the film is somewhat autobiographical. Up until now, Luther has primarily made documentaries. His best-known film is Miss Navajo, which came out in 2007. It's taken him a while to make a narrative feature, but it was worth the wait. Luther shoots with a documentarian's eye, presenting the story as though he simply showed up and recorded what was happening, which is not to say there aren't beautiful or deeply affecting visuals in here. There are some fantastic shots, but they're the result of Luther knowing where to put his camera and letting his subject do the work. I hope this is not his last fiction film, because he shows himself to be a skilled artist with a sharp eye, an open heart and a light touch as a director and as a writer. I am not a grump about the dominance of superhero films and big-budget action and sci-fi franchises in the movie and TV industry. I'm a fan of a lot of that stuff, and I wouldn't want to do without it. But I wouldn't want to do without films like this, either. Small, independent, gentle, artful, humanistic. We need films like this. Films about ordinary people. Films about children growing up and the adults in their lives growing to accept them. Films about the difficulties and rewards of family. Films about non-white characters told in their own voices, on their own terms, telling the stories they want to tell. Films about us in all of our magnificent diversity, experiencing and interpreting and sharing the endless variety of this joyful, heartbreaking, horrible, beautiful life. Fry Bread Face and Me is streaming now on Netflix, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's one of the best films I've seen all year. I hope you watch it, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you find it as resonant and meaningful as I did.